Welcome everyone to the Virtual Excel Academy. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are. We're with you too. We are so excited to have a returning presenter come back and join us again. He was very popular and he's very popular with us too. We love him. We love his energy. We love his stories. We have Adam Wilton back with us. He is our international presenter from Canada, and he's returning to talk about Lightbox Story Hour number two. Joining us also, we have our hostesses. Welcome, Charlotte. Hi, everyone. Charlotte is from Paths to Literacy, Perkins and Texas School for the Blind. We also have Leanne Grillet, Director of National Outreach Services. Hi, Leanne. Hello, everyone. And Adam, you're hiding behind the black curtain, but we are so excited to hear from you today. There you are. But you're muted. If you oh, want to take there you go. Hi, <laughs> if you want to take a moment to tell us who you are and where you're from, oh, what sure. are you up to today? Then we would love to hear from you in the chat window. There you are, Adam. Hi, Adam. Hi. I'll let you take it away from here, Adam. Okay, all right. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be back with you all. I'm just going to get sharing my screen so that we can get started. While you're getting started, I'm going to remind everyone, this is for our students. So teachers, stay in that background. It is going to be at the pace for the students who need story hour. Welcome, everyone, and welcome, students. Thank you, parents, for helping your students out enjoy this Lightbox story hour. All yours, Adam. Thank you, Leanne. All right, everyone. So here we are, another Lightbox story hour. I'm so glad to be with you all. Okay, here's the shape of our time together today. We've got four stories again. We're gonna start with a very quick message for our parents and our teachers who are, who are with us today. Uh, and then we'll have our first story, which is the school book by Todd Parr. And that'll be on the screen in front of you. Then we'll take a quick break. Uh, and then our second story will be on the light box and that's Bumpy Rolls Away by Josephine Stratton and Suzette Wright. We'll take another quick short, uh, sorry, another short move, uh, movement or repositioning break. Then story number three will be Canada in Colors by Per Henrik Gerth, and that will be a screen share. And our final story will be Back on the Light Box, a classic that many of us know and love, That's Not My Bear by Suzette Wright. Okay, let's get in a quick couple notes for uh, parents, caregivers, and educators. Um, so when we're, when we're looking today at how our young people, our students, our, our children, our youth are, are attending to the stories today, um, I'd like you to have a look at how they're reacting and responding to four key dimensions, color, contrast, size, and movement. Because hopefully this will let, give you a sense of your, your child or your student's visual profile. So while we read, watch for reactions to changes in each of these features. Watch for visual fixation. What are they paying attention to? Watch for following or tracking. What are they following? What are they not following? And watching, watch for wait time. So do they look right away or do they need a bit of time? And after each break, we're going to re reposition the display as necessary. So if there's, if the, we need to tilt the screen or move a little closer or further away, um, we can do that at every break. All right, without further ado, let's get into our first story. As I mentioned, this is another Todd Parr book. You remember Todd Parr from our last story hour? Um, oh, this is, the be this is the beginning part. So I'm just going to maybe give us a second to get situated, organized, everybody comfy, and we'll start in just less than a minute. So they don't need you to do anything but focus on their screen, is that correct? That's right, they just need to be seated in a way that is going to be comfortable and, and so that we can engage with the story. And maybe with that, we'll just get going. I know this is, a, this is an excited bunch, okay. Here we go, this is The School Book by Todd Parr. It's time for school. And on the screen we see a 
Little gal in her PJs, jumping up, she's excited for school. We get dressed. And we see a clothesline with shorts and pants and a young man jumping in there and he's dressed and he's ready to go to school. We eat breakfast. So we see two, two young people sitting at a table. One has some cereal and one has some fruit. We pack our lunches. Oh, and it looks like this. There's a picture of a dog, a yellow dog here, and he's holding on to a lunch bag with a bone sticking out of it. Maybe he's going to school. Good thing he brought his lunch. We get our backpacks. And there's a young lady here with her big blue backpack moving across the screen, excited to go to school. We all go to school. And here's someone on their rainbow bike moving across the screen on his way to school. We make everyone feel welcome. And here, spinning into view, we see three friends all with their backpacks, dressed and ready for school and excited for the day ahead. We meet our teacher. Ooh, there's our teacher swinging into view with a striped uh, suit on and a green tie. We have so much to do together. And coming in on your screen, you see a young lady uh, sitting at her desk and she's got uh, books and pencils and she's all ready to learn. And there she goes, off the screen. We eat healthy snacks. Oh, wow. So we've got three friends sitting at a table here. One of them is a pig. That's interesting. And we've got apples and carrots and what looks like little bits of vegetables on everyone's plate. Okay. Next page. We take care of our pets. And zooming in, we see a uh, we see a tank, and inside we've got a little gerbil. And this little gerbil has a wheel and a tube to play in. He's the class pet. Next page. Oh, mm, we nap. Here we see someone stretched out on a blanket and he looks like he is fast asleep. Next page. We visit the library. Oh my goodness, coming up here we see a dinosaur holding a book. I wonder if you've ever seen any dinosaurs in your library at school. That's exciting. We dance. And here we see a little pig, and he's dancing across your screen. Mmm, dancing at school sure sounds fun. We play outside. And here in this picture, we see that same little pig who must be going to school with the, with the children, sliding down the, the slide with the little girl. It's a big, tall, red slide. Ooh, that looks like fun. We eat lunch. Oh, and we see two friends zooming across the screen there with food on the plate in front of them. Hmm. Next page. We have visitors. And this visitor looks like she's a police officer. 
I wonder if you've ever had visitors to your school and what they, what they came to share. Maybe we can talk a little bit, bit about that when the story's over. Next page. If we get hurt, we get help. And there's a picture zooming in of the school nurse. It's great to have school nurses at, at our schools to be able to fix us up if we get hurt. Next page. We read lots of books. And there's a picture zipping across your screen of a, of, a, of a teacher sitting in a chair reading a book. I wonder if he's reading to the class. Next page. We paint and draw. Here we've got a picture of a young man and he's painting on an easel and he's using green paint and it looks like he's making a picture of a giraffe or you know that could be a dinosaur. Maybe it's that dinosaur from the library. What do you think? Next page. We make things at school. And so here are some examples of things that we could make there's a, there are two robots on your screen. One robot that's all black and one robot that has a blue head, a yellow body and a pink heart on its front. Oh, making robots at school sounds very fun. Next page. We water our gardens. Here we see, whoa. Coming up from the bottom, growing up there, we see a great big tree, my goodness. We water our gardens at school. All right, next page. We exercise our bodies. Here's a young man in a wheelchair rolling across and stopping in the middle of the screen. I notice he's wearing a helmet for safety. That's always important. Next page. We relax our minds. Ah, oh my goodness. That dog is zipping around the page. He doesn't look terribly relaxed, but he's got his eyes closed and he's balancing on a ball. We relax our minds at school. Next page. We share our things. And here's a skunk. And this skunk is sharing his pet frog and his pet worm with the class. And he's holding a green frog and a green worm in either hand. Show and tell at school is sure fun because we get to see all of the amazing things that our friends are interested in. Next page. We share our stories. Here's a picture of a robot, another robot. I wonder if a student was telling a story about a robot. Next page. We go home. We talk about everything we learned. Oh. And there's some parents or grandparents on the screen excited to hear about all of the things that we learned that day at school. Okay, that was our last page, but the, Todd Parr has a message for us here. And it says, there are lots of fun things to do at school. Always be kind and don't pick your nose. The end.
Good advice from Mr. Todd Parr. And that is the end of the school book. Oh, wait, there's one more page. <laughs> This is, an, this is one of the alien students in the class from another planet sharing what he learned with his parent. There we go. Now we've reached the end of our story. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We might not need the, all the three minutes, but let's take a quick break uh, to reset, reposition, and then maybe to get a snack. And then when we come back, we'll jump into our first light box story. And as you're taking a break, uh, there are a couple of things in the chat room. A couple of you have asked about the behind the scenes and uh, there is a link in the chat for a webinar that was done by Adam last week about how to do this behind the scenes. And also I just wanted to make a shout out, Roman and Elise, if you're with us, thank you so much for sharing photos. I wanna take this three minute break to, to ask those of you at home if you're able to send us a photo as you're viewing today's PowerPoint presentation with Adam, we would love to see it. So maybe you can take a moment to also take a second and take a picture of your child, your student playing with the light box activities as they're shown here with Adam. We would really appreciate it. And you can send it to the link in the chat window that we have provided. One other announcement, I'm gonna take a moment here to announce that is that we have a schedule for next week. There is a Spanish uh, sesh, language session next week and um, it will be our first of two Spanish language sessions. So look forward to that next week and we'll share the full schedule with you at the end of our session. Back to you, Adam. Wonderful, thank you so much, Cheryl. Okay, I am just going to make sure that everyone can see my screen. All right. Because I'm just, I'm still seeing Cheryl. We can see your screen, Adam. Oh, great. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, and I wonder, Leanne, if you're able to do the thing you did before where, where my screen comes up just so that I can see it as well. I can do that. Hold on. Thank you. Ah, fabulous. There you go. All right, everyone. Before I turn my big light off here and we get to the light box story, I'm going to show you the story that we're sharing today. This is Bumpy Rolls Away. And some of you might recognize this book. So we're going to share Bumpy Rolls Away. Let me just turn the lights off here and we'll get started. All right. All right. Here we go for Bumpy Rolls Away. Bumpy was a little ball with lots of bumps on him. Here's Bumpy spinning away. One day, Bumpy and his friend were playing a game. They were outside. Bumpy was happy. It was sunny and he could feel the warm grass under him. Here's Bumpy playing on the warm grass. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Then Bumpy's friend threw him too hard and he rolled away down a long hill. Okay, there's the, oh, this is a tall hill. And here's our friend Bumpy rolling down that hill. I wonder where he's going to end up. Let's see that again. Here's our friend Bumpy rolling down that hill. OK, 
Okay. Next. Bumpy rolled, he found some steps and Bumpy rolled down those steps. Bump, 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 bump. See that again. Bumpy rolled onto the sidewalk. The sidewalk is flat and hard, and here he is rolling along the sidewalk. Let's see that again, Bumpy. rolling along that sidewalk. And he rolled and he rolled and he rolled until he rolled into a box. Oh my, it was hot and dirty inside the box. Bumpy knew he was lost. Oh no. Well, here's our friend Bumpy, and he's stuck in this box. Oh, can't get out. It's hot and dirty inside that box. That doesn't sound very nice. Oh, I wonder how our friend Bumpy is going to get out of this situation. How will I ever get home to my friend again? He moaned. I miss my own steps. And here are Bumpy's steps. He's got one, two, and three steps that we can just see here. Bumpy misses his own steps. And he misses his own hill. There's Bumpy's hill again. Bumpy misses his hill. I don't blame him. It looks like a great hill. Suddenly, suddenly, the box that our friend Bumpy was in was picked up and carried away. He felt himself being carried up some steps. Step, 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 step. Let's see that again. Bumpy going up some steps. Step, step. A door opened and closed. The box was set down. Oh my goodness. Bumpy rolled out as fast as he could from the box. Where am I, he said. Thankfully, our friend Bumpy is out of the box at least, but I wonder where he is. Just then he heard someone running toward him. Did you get back here, Bumpy? I've been looking everywhere for you. Where have you been? <gasps> it was Bumpy's friend. Bumpy was home at last. Hey! Bumpy was too tired to tell his friend all that had happened. So he just sat on his own floor, happy to be home again. Can you tell Bumpy's friend about his adventure? 
mm, I wonder what we would what we would say. I'm sure we'd talk about all of the different places that Bumpy went on his journey. He was on some stairs. Step, 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 step. And he rolled along on the sidewalk. Here's the sidewalk. Bumpy rolled along that sidewalk. Roll, 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 roll. There it goes. And Bumpy also found his way back to his hill. There's Bumpy's hill. Let's see what he likes to do on that hill. He rolls down that hill. And now he's at home. And he's telling his friend all about it. And that is the end of Bumpy Rolls Away. There we go. All right. So what I'd like to do now is just take a quick break so that we can reset, reposition, and get a snack if we need, and then we'll get back onto our next story in just a few minutes. We love Bumpy. He's such a wonderful story and such a great character. In the chat box, if you want to tell us, where would you want to roll away with if you could roll away with Bumpy anywhere in the world or any place that you know of, where would you take Bumpy on a roll with you? Jennifer says, to a beach. I think I would roll to the beach with Bumpy too. Anybody else have any place that they would go to? Susie also says to the beach. To the park. To the zoo. I wonder what kind of animals Bumpy would enjoy seeing. To a museum. To an amusement park. Sanaya says to Disney World. Well, thank you for sharing everyone. If you need to reposition or have a snack, why don't you take a moment to do that? And Adam is gonna share story number three with us. A few other places that Bumpy could go to, to the pool, to Disney World, to Hawaii. Those sound like really fun places. Thank you, friends, for sharing with us in the chat room. Okay, Adam, your turn. All right. Thank you. Wow, that Bumpy seems like quite a well-traveled ball. All kinds of exciting places. All right, let's read our next story together. So... This story is called Canada in Colors, and the author is Penn Henrik Gurth. And I'm sharing this story because I'm from Canada. And so this is where the Lightbox Story Hour is coming to you today. So I thought I would share a little bit about where I'm from in a story. All right, let's get started. Here we are, first page, this is our title page. So the title is Canada in Colors. And we see some red maple leaves on the, floor, on the screen and a moose who looks like he's having a good time trying to catch those leaves in the air. I wonder if anyone here likes playing in the leaves when it's the fall time. Okay, next page. White snow. Blankets the ground. Here we see a little polar bear pushing a snowball across the screen. 
and some snowflakes fill the sky. Next page. Green spruce trees whisper in the woods. And here we see a bear and a beaver roasting marshmallows at a campfire. That's a fun thing to do when camping. I wonder if they're going to make s'mores. Mm -mm -mm. Next page. Red sand dunes greet the tides on Prince Edward Island. Hello, goodbye. Here we see a lighthouse and a girl playing with a ball and that ball is shooting across the screen. I wonder if that ball is a friend of Bumpy's. Hmm. Blue water flows swiftly in the St. Lawrence River. Here we see a boat full of our animal friends and cross the river. I saw a moose and a raccoon, a couple of bears, and a bird. On this page, we see a sailboat in the river and a white beluga whale. Next page. Orange monarch butterflies flood, flutter south from Point Pelee National Park. So here we see three monarch butterflies on the screen. Next page. Purple blackberries ripen for the picking. Mmm, mmm. Here's a little raccoon who's picking berries. And then we see, oh, we're finding so many berries on the bushes. They're just popping into view. Let's watch them all, see how many we get. Mm, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blackberries, seven ripe blackberries. Very tasty. Next page. Yellow wheat sways under the hot prairie sun. And so it's windy. And so the kite, there's a kite, a pink kite with a maple leaf on it. And the pink kite is shooting across the sky, being carried by the wind on the prairies. And we also see some wheat some tall yellow grasses in front of us. Next page. Pink wild roses bloom along hiking paths. And so here's a little bear and she's hiking along. And let's see how many pink wild roses she can find. Here they come. I count one, two, three, four, five, and then there was a sixth one that just went right across the screen. All right, next page. Brown log cabins nestle in the mountains. So there's a log cabin and a bear who looks like he's about to chop some wood. Maybe he's going to make another cabin or maybe he needs some wood for a fire to keep himself warm. Next page. Black lights twinkle with stars. Look, the Big Dipper. And there's the moon. Oh, and we're 
We're gonna see some stars. Let's see how many stars we can see. Here they come. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six stars and one moon. Wow, that's a lot of stars. Hmm, can you see the Big Dipper in there? Hmm, might be kind of tricky. Multicolored northern lights dance in the sky. So we see the northern lights come into view. And then we also see what's called an Anukshuk. And this is an Inuit sculpture. And that is the end of Canada in Colors. All right, so I'm now going to invite you to take a quick break to get a snack, to reposition, to reset, and we'll get uh, all set up for our last story, which is That's Not My Bear. So we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Thank, Thank you, you, Adam. For we minute. have one hand raised. I am just noticing uh, Jeanette has a question. Can we uh, go ahead, Jeanette, and you can push your space bar and speak to us. Okay, we're not hearing anything. One question that comes up frequently is about copyright. So I'll go ahead and address that briefly while Adam is finishing setting up. Um, if you are showing a book to your student, you this is considered uh, fair, um, fair use because it's making something into a format that is accessible to the student. So the only time that you would need to worry is if you were gonna try to, to publish this or do something with it um, to make money. Uh, otherwise, if you're just using it with your student, you're all set. And it looks like you're ready, Adam. But you're on mute. There we go, okay. So we, for our last story, before I turn out the light here, I'm gonna share with you a cover that many of you will recognize. This story is, That's Not My Bear. All right, we're going to read That's Not My Bear together. Just give me one second to turn off the light here so that we can get our light box shining bright. Okay. That's Not My Bear. And the author of That's Not My Bear is Suzette Wright. There once was a bear. Let's get in here. Okay. There once was a bear who was all fuzzy all over except for some spots where he was worn from being hugged over and over. And so here we can see there's some lighter spots here on our bear. And that's where the bear has been worn away because he's been loved so well. All right, our next page. And there was a boy who loved to hug the bear. And the bear and the boy did everything together. They played shipwrecked pirates. Yar! There's a pirate ship. They played pirates. And what else did they play together? They played jungle explorers. Ah, there's the bear hiding behind some leaves in the jungle. And they played pi shipwrecked pirates and jungle explorers every night. And every night they were also tucked into bed. And there's our bear friend all tucked away 
in bed. Okay. Till one day, the boy looked and looked, but he couldn't find him. Oh no, where? He missed his bear. No other bear felt just like his bear. Fuzzy all over, except for some spots. And he looked and he looked and he looked and he looked, but he couldn't find where is the bear. All right, let's read on. His mother brought him home a new toy bear from the toy store. Here's the new toy bear. That's not my bear, the boy said sadly. This bear is much bigger and has bigger eyes. Hmm, that's not his bear. Hmm, hmm, hmm. His sister gave him her bear. That's not my bear either, he said. Oh my, let's look at sister's bear. Sister's bear has a little bow tie on and looks to be a, like a red color. Hmm, that doesn't look or feel like the boy's bear at all. Hmm. Sister's bear just won't do, although it's very nice for a sister to offer her bear. Okay, next page. The neighbor found what might have been a bear underneath her rose bushes. And look, there's a bear underneath this rose bush. That's not my bear either, the boy said softly. Hmm, that's not the boy's bear hiding underneath this rose bush. And his friend gave him a bear that he found by the swings of the park. Oh my goodness, look at that bear. That's a big one. That's not my bear either, the boy said. So he missed his bear and his bear missed him. My goodness, this bear looks very large and kind of familiar. Hmm. Until one day, in the back of a closet, beside some shoes, behind a box, and buried behind some socks, he felt something fuzzy all over except for some spots. <gasps> what do you think he found behind those socks? Mm. That's my bear, he shouted. <gasps> and it was. There's his bear, worn in some spots right there and on his foot, hiding in the closet behind some socks. He might not have been hiding. He might just been lost in the closet. Now the boy and his bear play shipwrecked pirates. Yar, matey! Yar! Play shipwrecked pirates and jungle explorers. There he is hiding in the jungle. Jungle explorers every night until they're tucked into bed. And the boy and his bear 
never lost each other again, except the bear did lose a little more fur <laughs> from being hugged over and over. Oh my, look at our bear friend now. He doesn't look like he has much fur left from being so well loved after his adventure to the closet. And that is the end of That's Not My Bear. Hmm, I wonder if anyone here has misplaced or lost something and then they found it and been just as excited as the boy to find their lost treasure. Okay, everyone, that is all of the stories that I have to share with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been wonderful. And I'm going to turn it back over to Charlotte, Cheryl, and Leanne. Thank you, Adam. We really loved that. And we have one of our favorite toys, too. If you might remember, this is Buttercup. <laughs> and she used to be big and orange and fluffy. And we loved her so much. She's also lost some of her fur and her whiskers have gotten a little bent, but she still loves her cuddles. Does anyone else have one of those animals at home? We would love to hear about it. Who is your favorite animal at your home? You can share with us in the chat room if you have one of your favorite animals. In the meantime, I know there's lots of questions and they're also coming through in the chat room. So if you have questions, we would love to hear those also in the chat room. And in the meantime, I'm just going to make a couple announcements to let you type away in the chat room and share with us a couple of things to announce. There is a Kentucky Derby Dash that's coming up. And Charlotte has shared that on the Paths to Literacy website. And she will stick a link in to the chat window for a Facebook page about that. Also, Adam's methods are archived on the APH um, channel. And you have a link to that also in the chat window. And a schedule for next week is also going out today. So look forward to that. And let's see what's happening in the chat room because you guys all have so much to share with us. I saw one of our friends has a lamb that she has also loved that her grandmother gave her. Thank you so much, Ryan, for sharing with us. All right, so we have a few questions about the how-tos of your lesson, Adam. What did you use for the digital snipping tool? Well, that's a great question. Um, there's actually a lot of different tools that you can use. I just use something that's really simple and at hand. Um, it's called Paint 3D and it's built right into Windows 10. Um, and so it's pretty handy, but as I said, this is, uh, this is pretty common uh, functionality uh, that you can find here and there, but I just like to use something simple that's at hand. The bear you used, uh, you were able to change it. How did you change the bear to have more or less fake fur? <laughs> also in Paint 3D, um, I just used some of the brush tools um, to lighten or darken the fur. Um, and then for the last bear there, you'll notice I took all of his color except for his nose um, to show that he'd been well loved. Uh, again, just very straightforward, nothing special, just the, the standard, um, you know, image, uh, imaging and drawing tools that come with Windows 10. So someone noticed that you have black gloves on. Can you explain why you have black gloves sure. on and the clothing you've chosen? Yeah, so whenever I do a Lightbox story, it's n I try to make it obviously as little about me as possible. And so I don't want to wear anything bright or flashy. And by the same token, I don't want any of the details of my hands um, to uh, to be a potential distraction or to take away from the story. I also do it so that it's nice and uniform and that my student, whenever I put my gloves on, they know it's one of their cues that we're going to have a light box story. Now I do want to address the fingertips. <laughs> In ideal circumstances, these would be all black gloves. These are some gloves that I had at home that have the ability to manipulate a touch screen. Um, so these aren't perfect, but they they do the job. How did you apply the pictures to then clear sheets? Oh well, that's actually just kind of that's a uh, just, those are just regular um, 
inkjet uh, transparencies uh, printed uh, right from a, uh, actually, sorry, they're laser jet. They're, la they're from a laser printer. Um, but the advice that I would give there is that um, if you're going to, to print on two transparencies, just make sure that you've purchased the right transparency for the type of printer you have. So if you've got an inkjet printer, you want to get the transparencies that are made for the inkjet printer and vice versa. And, and the same is true for the, the laser printers as well. Now, at least one, it might have been two of your stories were utilizing, I believe, PowerPoint. Yes to generate the story. Can you explain what you did for that? Sure, um, so that's using a snipping tool. Um, so as Charlotte uh, said before, I'm creating a digital alternate format version of a commercially available uh, storybook um, in a format that's accessible, more accessible and more meaningful for students with perceptual disabilities, specifically those with visual impairments and additional exceptionalities. And so what I do there is I, um, scan some of the pages, and then I snip out the images, drop them onto the slide. I add some of my own images as well, um, because sometimes uh, the pictures come through a little crisper if you're using, let's say, like a, uh, an icon image or a, or a photo that you have already on your computer that's on a scan. Um, and then what I do is I drop all of the elements onto the slide, and then I animate them. And I make sure that the animations are very, um, and some of them might have been too fast, some of them might have been too slow, but I like to mix it up because then I like to see what my students are paying attention to and what they're not paying attention to. Um, and so use different types of animation. Um, and then the other thing I should mention is I just in, always make sure that I have a, a, a monochromatic backdrop for every slide so that we kind of reduce the complexity of the, uh, of the background there. You had some questions uh, during the time you were using the spinner. I yeah. can tell people orally that the spinner is not available with the light box. It's actually a, an item that's purchased mm -hmm. separately or ordered through federal quota separately, as well as there is a, another kit that also you can get with different overlays for the spinner, which is yet another extension of the light box. Where you, I know you were using the light box spinner. Did you make Bumpy or was that part of the light box kit? No, in fact, let me grab my friend right here. Um, we very fortunately have the spinner overlay kits here. And so this is actually a combination of, and it's very difficult to see, but Bumpy is actually Bumpy. It's a textured strip here. Um, but then because I knew that everyone at home wasn't going to be able to experience that, I also put some polka dots underneath. So this is actually two overlays on, on the spinner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I made sure to pick my newest spinner so that it would be Nice and smooth. <laughs> Very cool. What device did you recommend your students view PowerPoints on? That really depends on the kind of the assistive technology setup of the particular learner. Um, generally speaking, whenever I would do those type of books with students, um, I'd want to make sure that I was using something from their assistive technology toolkit that was very positionable. Um, where we could adjust the um, tilt and the, um, the angle of the display. Um, but that question really would depend on the assistive technology toolkit of the individual learner. Yeah. And actually, Adam, in your archived presentation that you did for us, you talked a lot about positioning. So I encourage you all to go back and watch that archived video. There's a lot of great tips in that video. Yeah, that was a lot of fun to do that. <laughs> and this was a lot of fun as well. It sure is. Where do you get the black gloves with the white tips? Uh, you know what? I will tell you, um, these came to me from uh, a friend of mine. I'm not sure where she got them. Um, she found them at a store because she'd seen me fumbling with my phone in wintertime in the past. And thought these, these fingers would be helpful. As I said, I typically wouldn't, I would want all black gloves, um, but these will, these, these will do for now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know where they came from, other than to say my friend. <laughs> uh, I know that you, oh yeah, go ahead, Cheryl. Do you have, do you ever videotape the stories for students to see from home? Um, you know what? I will admit prior to this, I hadn't done that because there was something really special about the interaction um, that we would have with the stories. It's actually a little bit um, uh, 
uh, it's unusual to, to, to do a light box story and not have that interaction and those reactions from the student. And, and you know, um, when you have your student with you, you can um, leave certain things up on the light box longer if, you're, if they're really noticing it and really attending to it and fixating. Um, and so uh, I haven't historically, just because I've always really valued that, that in-person contact, that literacy event, um, but I could absolutely see um, something that could be shared with families um, or something that could be viewed over again to maybe give some inspiration for some stories at home. Well, we're seeing lots of people interacting and actually sharing different links about gloves and light up gloves and gloves that don't light up and oh, fabulous. <laughs> all different ideas of gloves. So <laughs> I guess they're really thinking about that. And you have someone who says, well, you could use a black marker to cover your glove tips. <laughs> That is true. <laughs> that, that is true. I just wiggled my fingers there um, just to give a description. Yeah. Well, I am going to say thank you. This was a wonderful session. I think, yep, maybe we need to figure out how to squeeze one more Adam into the mix. <laughs> Thank you thank so much, Adam. Adam. And thank you, everybody at home. Um, somebody does have a question about the Spanish session. Uh, we have two of those coming up. One is a week from today, which is for younger children. And then we have another session. Uh, I just need to look at the date here. Another session on the 29th, which is Friday, the 29th of May. And that's for older children, also in Spanish. So you can find more details on the Paths to Literacy website. So thank you again, Adam. Thank you, everyone, for coming. We and, look forward um, to seeing you Thanks, everyone, soon. for bearing with me through the announcements. I didn't want to make announcements as people were dropping off the call, so I was making them periodically throughout. But I wanted to put a couple plugs in there. If you have kids at home and you have a couple of photos, please remember to send those in. We always love to see the kids enjoying these sessions. We have a Kentucky Derby Dash coming up. There's a face page link that Charlotte has shared with us. We've also shared as a resource Adam's methods for how he created this. And Charlotte is going to send out the schedule for next week. But just a couple of highlights so you know what to look forward to. Uh, Leanne and I are actually going to do a presentation. And that will be on Tuesday. And we're going to be talking about 3D shapes. So that will be one of our first focused math sessions. And that will be, again, Tuesday of next week. We also have a couple other sessions that are really exciting coming up. We have one on Google products with JAWS, NVDA, and Chromebox. That's Monday. We have using a Mac with VoiceOver. That's Wednesday. And we also have online voice lessons. This will be one of our first music lessons. So we're really excited to feature Ann Bell on Thursday, May 14th. Friday, we have um, the Spanish lesson that... Um, Charlotte mentioned. I'm not going to try and pronounce it, but uh, you all will see that on the schedule. So we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you again. Have a wonderful weekend. Adam, that was just fabulous. Leanne and Charlotte, thank you so much for your, your hard work behind the scenes. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Thanks everyone. for having me. Bye, Thanks everyone. Thank you for your closed captioning, too. <laughs> You're very welcome.